Hey there, Discover Family Church, Pastor Johnny here. and Today I want to share with you a little bit, as we go through the safari, we're going to be talking a little bit about a, a battle but that Jonathan and his armor bearer went through in uh, the Old Testament. And I've talked about the story before, but I just absolutely love it. And, but I want to talk a little bit about the difference between love and, and, and what it means to be loyal. And uh, The truth is, is that, that for so many times, love is not something that we can just proclaim. Just saying you love someone doesn't mean anything. You know, it just reminds me of, you know, Tina Turner. You know, what have you done for me lately? Like, it, it, love is not something you just proclaim. It's something that you, you have to prove. You know, having someone's back, having loyalty, having love for someone, it, it's super important to God. Uh, it, it's super important to us as humans. I mean, honestly, like, uh, loving God with all our heart means, it, that is what to be Christian is. To, being a, to be a Christian is to be Loyal. I want to read this verse from Proverbs chapter 3. It says, Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people, and you will earn a good reputation. I love that, it, it, that verse because it doesn't just talk about God. It doesn't just say being loyal to God will help you with God. It says whenever you do this, you will find favor with both God and and people. It's talking about other people. To, to be a Christian, to be a true follower of Jesus, isn't just about being loyal to God. It's, it's about being loyal to other people. Being uh, somebody who shows love and care for other people. To, to be a Christian, we have to have our, our brothers and sisters back with no conditions attached. We, do, we just have to. That's what the Bible shows us time and again. And, and, and that isn't, the, the, unfortunately, that's just not the world we live in. We live in a world that is full of divorce and bankruptcy and gossip. And uh, just, uh, we live in a world that revels in the failure of other people. Uh, jumping into that story I was saying, you know, the story of Jonathan and his armor bearer. You know, Jonathan was the, the son of King Saul. The, the, the king that, that, that was the very first, you know, whenever... God brought back kings to Israel. He said, okay, Saul, you're the guy. And David ended up taking over for him, King David. But his son, Jonathan, had an armor, a guy who was like his servant, but more than a servant. There was like his best friend, or not best friend, but like the, the guy who always had his back no matter what. And one day, Jonathan sees uh, some of the enemy across a, a cliff and says, hey, let's go over there and get them. And, and, and he basically says, to his armor bearer, he said, uh, Jonathan said to his armor bearer, climb up after me. The Lord has given them into the hand of Israel. And Jonathan climbed up using his hands and feet with his armor bearer right behind him. The Philistines fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer followed and killed behind him. In this first attack, Jonathan and his armor bearer killed some 20 men in an area of about half an acre. I love this story because if you know the whole story, God took away Jonathan's inheritance. Jonathan was, I mean, he's the son of the king. He's the prince. He's supposed to take over. And, and, but God took away that inheritance that he, for something that Saul did, not something that Jonathan did. And he, and he gave it to David. And, and, and here's what's so amazing about Jonathan is that in the midst of all that, that he became best friends with David. The guy who wasn't stealing because God gave it to him, but the guy who was receiving the birthright that was Jonathan's. Receiving the thing that, that, that Jonathan in the world that we live in rightfully deserved. And God said, no, I want to give it to David. And Jonathan decided to be best friends with David. So far as to, that, that, that Saul commanded his son to kill David and Jonathan said, no, I'm not going to kill my best friend. Yeah. In fact, so much so that, that he actually helped David wrestle the crown away from his dad. He helped David take his own birthright. Philippians 2.4 says it like this as I close. It says, it says, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Jonathan is a guy who over and over and over again looked to the interest of others. He wasn't looking out for himself. 
you know, whenever he went and attacked those Philistines, he wasn't looking out for himself. He was looking out for his kingdom of Israel. His armor bearer wasn't looking out for himself. His armor bearer was looking out for Jonathan. They had each other's back. They understood that. And whenever he helped wrestle the crown away from his father, he understood that God had a bigger plan, had something bigger. And so when it says in Philippians, let each of you not look to his own interests, but also to the interests of others, what it shows me is this. Is it the sign of really true Christian maturity in your life is not just being able to show love. It's when the reason that you're a part of the church is no longer about you. That's the sign of true Christian maturity. When your actions cause Jesus to be honored in the heart of someone else, and they don't lift you up, but they lift up Jesus, that's the sign of really living the life of Jesus. You see, having someone's back is much more than just being there for them. It, 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 when you have someone's back, it doesn't. it's not that you're just there for them. You, you're doing something that makes both of you better. I mean, do you want God to use you to do great things? Then I encourage you this season, this time, it might be harder to do it because, you know, we're all hunkered down in our houses, but you want to see God do something amazing in your life and through you? It's time to learn how to love our neighbors. To be there and have the backs of the people that need it. I encourage you this week, reach out to people that you know in the church, or maybe they aren't a part of the church. Maybe they used to be a part of the church. Give them a phone call. Say, hey, I love you, man, and I love you, woman. I love, I love who you are. I want, I want to pray with you. What's going on? How can I pray? What can I do for you? Is there any need that I can help? Don't look to just yourself. And don't just look at being loyal to God, but look at being loyal to people. Because that is truly being like Jesus. Let's be loyal. Let's love our neighbor. Love you guys. See you soon.